of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, the ages of all ages. Amen. Today is the first year of the Coptic New Year, and the Church commemorates the witness of the living martyrs, the martyrs who have shed their blood for the name of Christ from generation to generation are a living witness to the love of Christ revealed within each one of those martyrs. And that's why at the end of the gospel today, the Lord says wisdom is justified by her children. So we say that children or the martyrs are the children of the church or children of the love of Christ from one generation to the next. They are the proof of wisdom. And what does that mean, that wisdom is justified by her children? That one can proclaim to be wise. One could say they have uh, various degrees in, 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 from schools and educations and all kinds of uh, proofs of their uh, knowledge from schooling. But this does not necessarily prove wisdom. Wisdom will never be proved by words or eloquence of words because the early church grew on the blood of the martyrs, not on the words. So wisdom is justified by action. And her children are her children because they have proven that the wisdom of God is greater than the wisdom of humanity, which is, which is temporary. They have proven by their deeds, they have proven by their love, that they have accepted the invitation of God to repentance accepted the invitation of God to eternal life and lived their life faithfully to their last breath. When you look at Tertullian, he says that the blood of the martyrs is, this, is what watered this church, this, the seed of the church. And what grew the church was this love. And that's why John the Beloved explains the words of the Lord when the Lord was speaking to Nicodemus. He says, for God so loved the world that he did something that he acted upon the need of humanity for salvation, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that's why James the Beloved says, you say you have faith. I tell you, show me your faith by your words. He says, I'll show you my faith by my works. Like faith without works is dead, in other words. That's what St. John, St. James would explain to us. And that's why the Lord, we'll talk about this, God willing, if the Lord wills, this whole parable of the children in the marketplace more tomorrow. But the Lord is saying here that there are people that observe, but do nothing about what they've observed. And that's why wisdom cannot be attained by simply observing. There has to be an action taken. I mean, when today we commemorate the 20th anniversary of 9-11, and all these souls that died... Uh, not knowing that they were going to their deaths on that day. Thousands of people. And we hear the heroism of the people on flight United 93 that was heading to the capital that they crashed in, in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. And we see the, the love of the messages left by people on those planes that are being hijacked. Their last words they uttered to their loved ones before their death. We see that there is a, a witness a witness of action taken. The people on the plane, the people that were that gave themselves so that they would save maybe a whole a thousand of other people were witnesses to wisdom. They justified it by their deeds. The people that firemen and police officers and everyday civilians that ran into the buildings uh, not knowing or perhaps even knowing they were they were about to face certain death with the collapse of the towers showed wisdom. You say, well, how did, they, how did they show wisdom by dying? How did they show wisdom by allowing themselves to die? They should have ran the other way so that they don't die. Well, that's the whole point of wisdom. Wisdom is not justified by, let me take care of me, myself, and I, and save me, myself, and I. Wisdom is justified by what I do for others. As they say, rather than curse the darkness, light a candle. And that's what these people, they, they saw darkness, they saw evil, and they responded to that darkness, to that evil, by turning on the light that's in their hearts, by giving themselves for the good of others. While others were plotting to destroy others, people in the same context were plotting how to save many more others alive. And that's why the witness of John the Baptist is a witness 
of returning to the wisdom of God. Returning to what God had planned for each and every one of us from before the creation of the world. That the first words he uttered when he began his mission were repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, come back to God. Come to the love of God that surpasses all things. The power of God that is expressed in his great love for humanity. That love that will never fail. Come back to that love. And that's why John the Baptist's witness is so powerful. Because he stood in the face of everything and anything and anyone, including King Herod at the time, for the truth. The truth of love and the value of repentance towards God. And that's why when they asked him, what should we do? He said, do works befitting repentance. Now that you've accepted that wisdom is only proven by what you do, not only what you say, make sure the things you do are worthy of of repentance, are worthy of returning to God, are worthy of the blood of Christ that will be shed for you on that cross on Good Friday. This is the wisdom that is justified by her children. So if we want to truly receive the inheritance of the children of God and the children of wisdom, let us say, Lord, grant us to do the deeds that you've done in love, in humility, in holiness, and righteousness, that we may stand before you eternally. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.